I cannot. I cannot. Sorry, not sorry for crushing your dreams of making history. And yes, I am wearing a t-shirt that has a dinosaur with a keg in its mouth. <laughs> Just go with it. Just go with it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I am glad to have you here again with me this week. And I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, for your responses and reactions to last week's video. Uh, it was very interesting to talk about the almond wedding. It's a little bit out of the realm um, of the channel, but closely related enough that I thought it could be a good fit uh, content wise. And you guys seem to really um, enjoy commenting. So thank you all so much for interacting uh, with me last week. It was nice to have you here. If you are a new viewer and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, mostly related to fat acceptance, but sometimes we sprinkle, we get a little outside of that realm. If you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. I know for most of my viewers, it's early in the morning, so I hope you have your breakfast, your smoothie. If you're following uh, from any other time zone, I hope you have your snacks ready, because today is going to be a whopper of a video. We are not talking about just one person, but two people. That's right, we're covering two, and the reason for that is that celebrities, especially in this fat acceptance realm, have been out here just wild in these last few weeks and I've already made full-length videos about both of these women um, in recent weeks and sometimes it feels like overkill to make two full-size videos so I figured this week we would try a little something different uh, a little more segmented video where we basically just cover quick little news reels um, about what is happening so today we're gonna talk about Lizzo quitting music and Tess Holliday speaking at the UN. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about Lizzo announcing that she hates the world and threatening to quit music. We recently discussed Lizzo announcing to the world that she never wants to be thin, right? That happened a few weeks ago when she was also telling us that she, while she doesn't want to be thin, she is hippy dippy woo woo when it comes to she didn't say health. I remember her saying health is a loaded word, which LOL, okay, you're still into like wellness culture. But anyway, she went on and on telling us that even though she's doing those things for her health, she doesn't want to be a thin person. And I made that video. I was so proud of it. You guys were really commenting all over it. And then literally two days later, Lizzo decided she should keep acting up on the internet and she was tweeting and telling everyone that she hates the world and that the body shaming comments are too much. And she went ahead and I think protected her Twitter. I don't know if she privated it, uh, but she put it into a protected mode because she just couldn't handle it. And she did this in response to a tweet that she deemed uh, as mean, uh, mean-spirited, body shaming. Um, so let's take a look at that tweet that sort of set this whole thing in motion. The tweet said, how is Lizzo still this fat when she's constantly moving this much on stage? I wonder what she must be eating. I think it's the emphasis on this, like this fat, that makes this comment come off a little bit mean-spirited. But I do also understand like where the person is coming from, right? Lizzo has um, been telling us she doesn't want to be thin, claiming this is just what her body looks like. Uh, calling herself a pioneer of the body positive movement. So like I get where this person was coming from and Lizzo has a song called The Truth Hurts. So like is it mean-spirited? Is it the truth? You guys let me know. I think it came off a little mean-spirited but I also like I also get it. But this is the tweet that sort of kicked off this whole thing, right? And it's Lizzo's response to this tweet that I want to focus in on um, because it, I mean, it set her on fire. She was tweeting multiple things. And then, like I mentioned, she protected her Twitter. Before I get too far in, I wanted to mention, I found it super interesting 
that Lizzo is still in charge of her own social media, right? We all know that the internet is kind of a weird place to exist. People can really just say anything they want to you or about you, and there's really not much that you can do about it, right? Except for not interact with that content, don't search for it, don't look for it. Just those types of things to protect yourself. And I feel like most celebrities realize that, like they know that the internet is the wild, wild west. And once they hit a certain point, they have people in their life that they pay that could do this for them. And I, like Lizzo is one of those people, right? She has enough money to pay someone on her team to take over social media. She could, if she still wants that sort of like heartfelt connection with her followers, like you, there are ways that you can do that or make it look like you're doing that and you're still a little bit removed. You're not reading the comments. You're not responding. There are things like ghostwriters and oftentimes marketing teams are sort of ghostwriting for the people they're working for because you're, you would write those social media posts in Lizzo's voice to make it sound like her. Like that's literally their whole job. She could totally lean into that and then she would never have to see any of this and then problem solved and she still has a social media presence. Now within her longer response to this tweet, we see her saying she's angry to see people comment that she's eating fast food because according to her, she gave it up years ago. She continues on in the thread to say, I'm literally just trying to live and be healthy. This is what my body looks like even when I'm eating super clean and working out. For me, one of the issues, one of the sticking points on my channel has always been the way that body positive uh, folks and fat activists, um, the way that they talk, they are very vague with their language. They use very broad definitions of different things. And and they do that because it, it gives them a space to have some cognitive dissonance, right? Like if, if we leave it broad, our definition, then we're never pigeonholing ourselves in anywhere. Therefore, we're never letting anyone down. We sort of have a lot of gray area to work with, right? And for me, it was so telling, like this is Lizzo with her vague definitions telling us that she thinks that her diet is clean. Like she thinks that she is eating clean and there's a good chance that she thinks she's eating clean because she's a vegan. And I only know that because I too went through a vegan phase, right? And I did it because veganism is healthy for you and there are different things you can do. And it also puts us in a space where we've seen a lot of plus size people, again, I have dealt with this as well, where they'll say things like, but I'm not even eating that much. And she just got done telling us that her job is very strenuous and she is getting a lot of physical activity. But the truth is, even if she's not eating fast food in terms of like McDonald's and Wendy's, right? Like traditional fast food, she still is eating out a lot. And we see her doing it on her TikTok, like she always tells on herself because her TikTok has been branded as Lizzo Be Eaten, same way her um, Instagram has been branded. She created that for herself as a part of her brand, right? So like if you've created the issue for yourself, it kind of makes it hard to feel bad for you. And as I mentioned, I've been a part of the vegan movement. Um, I had, I'm not saying that veganism cannot be healthy. I will put that disclaimer out there because I know how vegans are. They will immediately be in the comments like keyboard warrior telling me that you can be vegan and healthy. I get it. I understand that. But there's a nuance to the vegan community that a lot of people don't know about. And that is that you have vegans who are very, they go into it, they're whole foods, plant-based, and they stick to that. So they're mostly just eating whole foods, not eating a lot of processed stuff, not even really eating oil, at least when I was in it. And then there are the vegans who are junk food vegans, right? Oreos are vegan. 
You can get vegan pizza now. Like, there are so many things that you can eat that don't have animal products in them, but they're so heavily processed that it's still a lot of calories or about the same amount of calories you would eat even if you were eating a standard American diet of, of fast food and processed food. So that is also a branch of veganism, and it's a branch that a lot of fat vegans tend to fall into. And again, I know I have experience with it. So I'm not just like talking out of my butt, I promise. It happens to people. And again, that's not to say that veganism cannot be healthy. But when you get into it and you're coming from this place of always looking for food that is fast, easy, um, doesn't take a lot of effort, right? Because that is something that happens a lot. Uh, that, those are the foods you just tend to gravitate towards even when you've become a vegan. And so therefore you're still eating the same amount of calories. I hope that made sense. I feel like I got a little rambly there, but it's possible to become a vegan and it like not be the healthiest thing for you. So just putting that out there. Now, I also want to add to the conversation that I would hate to see Lizzo uh, quit music. I think she's super talented. I find her music super catchy. And honestly, if Lizzo wants to stay fat, then she should stay fat. If Lizzo wants to lose weight, then she should lose weight. Like, it's that's her prerogative, and I'm fine with that. I am not a person who's holding the water either way. But I want her, and I hope for her, that she can just get some self-awareness, start kind of defining some of these vague definitions that she uses, um, some of the cognitive dissonance that's going on, um, and just remembering that, that she created this brand, right? She is the one who created her brand and her brand has been centered around her body. Like there are just so many things she does to keep her body and, and food and eating as a part of her brand. If she doesn't want people to talk about those things, she can easily shift her brand. She has a whole team of people that could rebrand her overnight if they wanted to. So I don't feel bad. I hope she doesn't quit music, but like, girl, there you have so much money and so many opportunities to change things. Like, uh, f tell me you have first world problems without telling me you have first world problems. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our second story of the day, talking about Tess Holiday. Tess has been on the internet in the last week or so to tell us that she spoke about EDs at the UN. Take a look. Hey y'all, I'm at the airport and I'm so fully processing that I spoke at the UN yesterday and it was the first time that they have talked about eating disorders inside the walls of the UN and I think I've cried so many times just thinking about that moment. I'm wearing, I'm wearing Anne Nicole Smith today, um, <laughs> you know, our queen and you know, Elisa Donovan, um, who's Amber from Clueless. <laughs> the reason I'm a redhead, moderated the panel. Because she also has um, suffered with an ED in the past. And I just kept thinking, what is my life? I'm like this trailer trash from Mississippi, sitting on this panel next to Harvard professors and talking about how we need to do better and provide better health care and and mental health resources and how we need to include fat people and people of color and trans folks in the conversation with eating disorders and I um God, I feel grateful. I will post like more of my speech, um or like my time talking tomorrow. Um I am just processing all of it and um, I'm so proud of myself and I was so proud to be asked to be a part of it and I love you guys and yeah I'll update you guys more soon and um, first things first here now that you've seen that clip and just because I was feeling a little extra like snarky today might be the new hormones who knows I googled to see if anyone had ever spoken at the UN 
uh, the same building that she was in, the plaza, to see if anyone else had ever talked about EDs before. Because she's really like, I'm having a history maker moment. They've never done this before. And um, guess what I found? They have talked about EDs inside of the walls of the UN before. And they've mostly, as you would have probably guessed, talked about restrictive EDs. So, once again, Tess is not making history as she claims to be on the internet. Because in 2015, there was actually a Swedish um, female student who attended the UN when they were talking about uh, human rights and women's rights as issues. And she actually was talking to them um, about the way that restrictive EDs should be considered when talking about women's rights and just the different things um, that affect women, especially in marketing and things like that. So Tess is not the first um, and not the first to talk about restrictive EDs. So sorry, not sorry for crushing your dreams of making history, uh, but like you weren't the first. Just throwing that out there. Just, just throwing it out there for everybody to know. Anyway, after that first TikTok, she made good on her promise and she did share some more of her speech uh, that she did. It looks more like a panel discussion to me, uh, but she did share it. So we're going to take a look at that here. I'm sure many in the room know that with weight discrimination, we see this showing up in, in schools with downgrading by teachers, uh, with admission to college. We see it in the workplace, not people not getting people in larger bodies, not being hired, not getting promoted, getting lower salaries. At Tess, after hearing the research from Brim, as somebody who's navigated the beauty and modeling industries for quite a while, how has this shown up in your career? Well, I don't think that there's any surprise that um, we have been affected in the plus size modeling industry and um, as she was sharing overall by um, deep issues that are rooted in racism. I mean, the fact that folks despise larger bodied individuals roots back to racism. It all roots back to racism. And until the country actually addresses the violence that frankly white supremacists and white folks are causing to people of color and the systems um, that uphold those, um, it's going to it's going to continue to happen. And those numbers are shocking, but it's not a surprise. I mean, it's not been very popular to come out and talk about having my type of eating disorder publicly. It's impacted my career. It's impacted um, so many things, and it's not a popular thing to talk about. But then going back to what she's saying, uh, folks of color have been saying all of these things. It's just no one was listening. So. Um, I, I really hope that we are moving towards a future where folks listen to to people of color and actually take them seriously and actually put change into place that helps and supports all of us. So I don't know if this was like a bad edit or what happened, but it is so disjointed. And I, it just didn't really make a lot of sense to me because we see Dr. Bryn right at the beginning is the person speaking, talking about how fat phobia affects people's chances of getting careers um, and going to college, like the different ways that fat phobia is apparently showing up in real life. And she may not specifically be talking about fat phobia. She could just be talking about EDs in general. Um, but it, it appeared to me based on those talking points that she was talking about fat phobia specifically. And then they lobbed the question to Tess saying, how has this affected you? And Tess just, Tess just starts talking about how the plus size modeling industry has been affected by things that are rooted in racism, which is the other thing that makes me think contextually that it was based on fat phobia because we continuously hear them saying that fat phobia is rooted in racism. But if you watch closely, there's a cut 
between Dr. Bryn talking and when Tess starts talking. And so that made me wonder, is it, was it a bad edit on Tess's part? Um, why would she edit it that way and then choose to post it? I don't understand why she would clip two things together that maybe didn't go together. That could potentially make her look awkward, but also if she did edit it down because there was more talking in between, it just, she didn't answer their question. She just went off on a, on a weird tangent. It honestly made me wonder if Tess like couldn't answer the question because she has been successful, right? So we hear this doctor saying, um, people don't, aren't getting good jobs. People can't really move up. People are getting paid less. They can't get a good education. They're not getting promoted. And then they're, they're lobbing the question to Tess and it's sort of like, shh she's successful like she's a model she's an influencer she's getting brand deals she has her own company like she's been pretty successful so how is she gonna successfully answer a question about how fat phobia keeps you down you know what i'm saying like the, she can't say that it kept her down because it didn't <laughs> like did anyone else think that same thing it, you'll have to let me know because to me it read I can't answer this question because that actually didn't happen for me so instead look over here so I can tell you about how fat phobia is rooted in racism and then you clap <laughs> that's how this works I'd also like to just point out the irony of Tess Holiday so bravely showcasing herself speaking about how fat phobia is rooted in racism and racist tendencies and how we should deconstruct things while she is surrounded by two thin white women on stage. We can't see the crowd, obviously, so we don't know who's here, but it came off just like so cringy to me. I don't know. It gets a little icky and sticky and I, it just felt cringy to me. But to be honest, if you didn't think that the clip was bad, like it gets worse. And the only thing worse is the caption that she put on this TikTok. It's so bad because there are two other people on that stage that we cannot see. And I only know that because she tagged them in the caption. But as you can see, she's tagged um, Abhilash Patel and Shuler Baylar. Um, Shuler is an American swimmer and the first openly transgender NCAA Division I swimmer, as well as an international speaker. And Abhilash Patel is an entrepreneur, digital investor, and philanthropist. In this caption, after she is so boldly talked about how she's uh, fighting racism, it's fat phobia is rooted in that, and we should all be trying to do better. She misspelled Schuler by Lars' name, even though she tagged them. Like, what? And then she also, more egregiously, in my opinion, <laughs> listed Patel's company incorrectly. She says it's called Within Help but it's actually called within health, health test, not help, health. And it made me wonder, do you think she couldn't put that in her caption? Because remember, health is a word that she doesn't use in her household. Well, there are a few words that I don't allow when somebody comes into my house and healthy is one of them. All right. That's all I've got for you guys today. You will have to let me know what you think. How do you feel about Lizzo threatening to quit music? Did you think that that comment was kind of mean-spirited? Is it worth putting your Twitter on protected status to try to make it more of a safe space? Like, I don't even, I don't even have a Twitter because, like, I just, I can't with that. Like, I might have one created, but I don't use it. I don't scroll Twitter. Like, it is not a thing that I enjoy because it is the wild, wild west. Uh, how do you feel about Tess Holliday speaking at the UN, claiming to be the first to talk about EDs within the walls of the UN, right? 
I just, I just can't, y'all. They're too much. These celebrities are too much. And they're consistently out here talking about their first world problems. Like they got real struggles. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for being here. I will see you in the next one. Bye.